The measure tools let you measure distances, angles, quantities, and properties of your objects. Let's begin by looking at the measure distance tool. With the tool selected, click once on any part of an object, and as you drag the mouse, you see that the linear distance is displayed on the screen. You can move the cursor and snap to other parts of objects without clicking, and the distance is displayed. If you click, then the measure tool is complete and the measurement remains displayed on the screen. We'll look at another option inside the measurement tool in the tool options palette, which is called also measure perpendicular. With that option turned on, then it'll measure the perpendicular distance also. For example, if I were to click on the corner point and drag the mouse across, you can see as I snap it to the vertical edge of the other object, it's giving me the linear distance along that edge. And in addition to that, it's also giving me the perpendicular measurement. We can see that on the edge of the same object, the perpendicular measurement from that point along that edge, and also the linear distance. The measure distance tool lets you resize your objects by typing in a new value for the measure distance. There are three parameters that control this type of operation. Let's begin by looking at the Referenced Entities option. With the Measure Distance tool active, I click the corner point of my object, and then I click on the other point, and it gives me the Measure Distance in the Modeling window and in the Tool Options palette. I can type in a new value for this Measure Distance. For example, I will reduce this to 6 feet, click the Update button, and you see that the object is now resized based on that measured distance. And this is because I clicked on that object, so this is the referenced entity. If I were to undo that operation and use the measure distance tool again by clicking on the corner point, and then I will click on the corner point of another object. The measure distance is again displayed in the modeling window. In the tool options, I will type in a different value for that distance, click the update button, and now you'll see that the distance between those two objects has been reduced because these are the referenced entities that I clicked on. And now we'll look at the selected entities option, which lets us include additional selected entities in the updating operation. For example, I'll select the pick tool and pick the object on the right. And then with the measure distance tool active, I will measure the distance from the corner point to the corner point of a different object. I will type a new value in the distance, click the update button, and you see that the referenced entity is updated and the additional selected entities are updated also. Undo the operation. If I were to turn off the referenced entity option and perform this operation again, you'll see that I have the object selected on the right. I will measure the distance on a different object. Type in a new value in the distance field, click the update button, and you see that only the selected entity has been updated because the referenced entity option is turned off. The third and last parameter that we'll look at that applies to updating measured distances is the reference plane underlay option. This allows us to update or resize a underlay sketch image that is loaded with a custom reference plane. Let's begin by creating our own custom reference plane. Select the Edit Reference Plane tool, and we'll move our custom defined reference plane anywhere that we want and resize it. Once that custom reference plane is created, we can see that that plane is automatically saved inside the custom reference planes palette. If you double click on that plane, the Reference Plane Parameters dialog is invoked, which allows us to control the size of that reference plane numerically. And we can also load a underlay sketch image. Turn the underlay option on, and we can load any underlay sketch image. Inside the Reference Plane Parameters, we can also apply some additional transparency to see through the image which will be placed on the reference plane. We can also give it a custom scale or size if we have that information. Click the OK button, and the underlay image is placed on the current reference plane and ready to be traced. If you would like to use the Measure tool to resize that, we can use a similar method to what we did with the previous objects and apply it to this custom reference plane underlay. 
With the Measure Distance tool active, we can click any two points on that reference plane. I'll try to click close to the underlay sketch image, which represents the distance of that room. According to my clicks, it says the distance is about 7 feet. I'll give it the actual distance of that room, which should be 12 feet. Click the Update button, and this will update the reference plane underlay image to that distance. And now my reference plane underlay sketch is ready to be traced over at the proper scale. I would like to look at another technique that can be used for bringing in underlay sketches and resizing them to the proper scale. This other method involves using the billboard tool, which is located in the Generate suite of icons. This tool allows us to load a pixel image and it automatically creates a material and maps it onto a rectangular polygon. With the billboard tool active, we can see in the tool options we can load any pixel image that we want. Here we have the same scanned image again. And we can give it a certain size, just as we did with the underlay that's used on a custom reference plane. The difference is that when I place that billboard object, it is a 2D polygon or a rectangular shape in which a material which uses that image map is then mapped onto the face of that object. To resize that to the proper scale, to use that as an underlay sketch, we'll use our measure tool. And in the tool options, we'll choose the selected entities option. So with the pick tool active, I will select the object. I will measure a distance anywhere on that object. For example, these two positions here, which represent that room. Type in the value that I want, which is 12 feet. Click the Update button, and you see that that polygon, or that rectangular polygon, which has the image map mapped on it, is now resized to the proper scale. And now we can use that to begin tracing over that underlay sketch. Next, we'll look at the Measure Angle tool. With that tool active, observe that in the Tool Options palette, there are no additional parameters. Just simply click any three points to measure the angle. The first point clicked is the center of the angle. Second point will start the measured angle, and I don't have to click a third time to measure the measured angle. Just simply snap to any point location to read the angle value. When I click a third time, the measure angle operation is complete. It should be noted that as you're measuring an angle, you can tap and release the Command key on Mac or the Control key on Windows, and that will toggle the clockwise or counterclockwise direction of that measured angle. The Measure Between tool lets us measure the perpendicular distance between any two segments or any two faces of objects in your scene. For example, let's say we want to find the linear perpendicular distance between these two walls. Select the Measure Between tool, select the inside face of that wall and the inside face of the other wall and the perpendicular distance is displayed as 18 feet. We can accomplish this by also selecting segments. Select the bottom edge of this object and the bottom edge of that object, and the linear perpendicular distance is displayed. The Measure Quantity tool lets us measure quantitative properties of your objects, such as boundary length, service area, and volume. The selected entities can be objects, faces, outlines, or segments. For example, with the Measure Quantity tool selected, click on a solid object, and in the tool options you can read the surface area and volume information of that object. Select another object, and the boundary and surface area information of that object is now displayed. If you want to select just a part of an object, you can hold down the Command key on Mac or Control key on Windows, and I can select just a single face. And now the boundary length and surface area of that selected face is displayed. I can select a single edge, which gives me the boundary length. I can click on the edge of our surface object to give us the boundary length of that surface. If I click on an entire surface object, then it will give us the boundary length and the surface area of that entire surface. You can select multiple entities at the same time. For example, I can select the box, and you'll see that the surface area and volume is displayed for the box. Hold down the Shift key and I can add an additional object to my selection set, and you can see that the surface area and volume is additive for all the selected objects. If you'd like to remove a selected object from your selection set, just 
hold down the shift key and subtract one object from that selection and now the surface area and volume represents just the single selected object and if I were to select all my objects then the surface area represents the surface area of all my selected objects and the volume represents the volume of just the solid objects that are combined together it should be noted that when you select a object the center of gravity is displayed by a yellow dot and when you have multiple objects selected then the center of gravity is defined within the bounding volume of all the selected items it is defined numerically in the tool options and also represented as a yellow dot in the modeling window the last tool we'll look at is the mass properties tool which gives us weight volume moments of inertia and principal axis of your solid objects with that tool selected simply select a solid object and the information is displayed in the tool options palette we can modify the density and the unit of measurement for the weight and volume calculations it should be noted that this applies only to solid objects if you have a paper thin surface you can use the thicken tool to shell the object into a solid object of uniform thickness and this concludes the measure tutorial